Hello, Rivermont. So excited that we continue today our study of the Westminster Shorter Catechism. We're coming to the end of the section that teaches us about the Ten Commandments with question number 81, which asks, what is forbidden in the Tenth Commandment? What is forbidden in the Tenth Commandment? And the answer that we have for us here in the uh, in the Shorter Catechism is that the Tenth Commandment forbids all discontentment with our own estate, envying or grieving at the good of our neighbor, and all inordinate motions and affections to anything that is his. You see, in our own life, it's so easy for us to be discontent with what it is that God has given to us. But this commandment forbids us from giving in to this type of envy and greed. In my own life, there is a situation that always comes to mind when I think about envying and being discontent in particular about the good of somebody else. We had some acquaintances in South Carolina, and uh, they were saving up to take their children to Disney World. And this is something that was going to take them about a year, putting aside a little money each month so that at the end of the year, they could take their children down to Disney World and have a fun vacation. During this time, uh, around about halfway through the year, April's parents, my in-laws, offered us an amazing gift that they wanted to pay for us to be able to go down to Florida and to go to Disney World. And they were going to pay for this as a gift from them to our family. Now, we knew that our friends just loved the idea of going to Disney World, and we shared this with them, uh, not trying to rub it in their face, just thought that they would be excited that our family was offered such a gift. And yet, they weren't. They were upset. They thought it wasn't fair. They were uh, noticeably cold towards us and just felt like, hey, that's not fair that somebody would give you such a gift when we have to work so hard to receive it. Now, in no way did April or I deserve to receive this gift. It was only of grace that her parents gave it to us. It was because they were seeking to be kind to us and they had the resources to do so and they gave us this wonderful gift. And yet, our friends were not willing to rejoice with us. Rather, when we had something good come into our lives, it grieved their hearts. They were envious of what we had received. And I wonder if you've ever been in a situation like that, where somebody received something that was good, and you, instead of rejoicing with them as you should, were envious. You were angry. You wish that you would have been the one that received it. You think, I am so much more deserving of this good thing. I should be the one that gets the free trip to Disney World. I've been the one that's been putting all the work and saving up for this. Why is it that they got it? And we can become envious of so many other things. Of course, there are material blessings that we are envious, that somebody else has a nicer car than we do, a nicer home than we do, that they have a better job, that they have a higher salary than that, than we have. And instead of rejoicing at the blessing that came into their life, we are grieved by it. It's not just material blessings that we are envious of. We're envious of relationships, right? Even as the commandment talks about that we are not to covet our neighbor's wife or our neighbor's servants, right? We have uh, relationships in our lives that we wish, we look at other people and we wish we had their spouse. We wish that we had their children because from our perspective, it looks like they have so much more than we have. They have such a better life than we have. And therefore we grieve and we are envious and we desire what they have for ourselves. For the word of God forbids us from such emotions, such, uh, such affections towards somebody else's blessings. Rather, we need to see that everything that we have, everything that we've been given and everything that our neighbor has been given is purely and totally a gift of God's grace. And why should we desire what somebody else has been given from God and be angry about that? Rather, we should bless the Lord for all that he has given to this world. You see, this is one of the major hurdles that comes into place when we seek to understand the gospel. 
You see, the gospel message is not that those who work hard enough are going to receive salvation. Rather, the gospel message is that the Lord freely gives his blessing of salvation in Jesus Christ. And therefore, if we have such a heart that says we should receive what is our desserts, that is, we should receive what we have worked for, and we are envious and desirous of the good gifts that other people are given from the Lord, the gospel will make no sense to us because we will want to work to receive the blessings of God, and we will be angry when we look at others that we don't deem as righteous as ourselves that God freely brings into his kingdom. You see, the Lord Jesus tells a parable about a manager who hires workers to come and to work into the field, and he, and he has a set wage that he is going to give, and people come at the beginning of the day, and they start working, and then they, some come later in the day, and some don't come to the very end of the day. And then when he goes to pay them, he pays each one the same amount. Now, to us, we think that doesn't make sense. Why would the Lord pay the same amount? Why would the manager pay the same amount to the person who just worked a few hours at the end of the day as well as the one who worked the whole day through? That doesn't seem equitable. And yet this parable is teaching us that the Lord has the right to give the blessings that he has deemed to give to whomever and however he deems to give it. The Lord gives the blessing of salvation He says, not to the righteous, but to those who are willing to come to him in faith. The Lord Jesus says, the physician came not for the well, but for the sick. And the question that this commandment, the 10th commandment, is asking is, are you willing to rejoice in the grace of the Lord, knowing that it is according to his grace alone that we receive anything? Or will you be envious? believing that it is by our works that we must be blessed. Would you not turn to the Lord, turn from envy, and place your faith in Jesus Christ and Him alone? Let us pray. Almighty God, we come to you now at this time. We pray that you would take out of us a heart of envy and coveting and give to us a heart of gratitude and love. Let us rejoice with those who rejoice. Let us weep with those who weep, and let us be fully content in all the blessings that you have given to us in Christ Jesus our Lord. It's in his name that we do pray. Amen. Well, would the Lord bless you, Rivermont, until we get to see each other again face to face.